How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we're back. We've had a little bit of an absence, and sorry, it is the end of summer, so we were trying to get the last little bit in now that school is starting up again for Jordan and stuff like that. So we don't have any other planned absences, really, to the end of the year, so hold us to that because apparently we suck <laughs> hardcore. Uh, it was good. Everything's been good. This week I got humbled. I went to the first show that I've been to in th over three years. My neck still hurts. It's bad. I didn't even, I didn't even go that hard. Other Concert. than that, yeah. So, what about you, Jordan? I feel like I, this is one sided right here. I've got a billion clients and. A billion grad school assignments, and I am drowning, but I am here. We are drowning, but thriving, so. Drowning and thriving. We're uh, multitaskers up in here. Anyway, since it's been a while, there have there are a couple updates and things that we need to talk about. So strap in for that one. The first of them being... We need to uh, talk about, uh, we now added YouTube membership. So we already had the Patreon. If you would like to join the Patreon, you could do that. We wanted to add membership because it is a little bit easier. Instead of going to patreon.com slash Jordan and McKay, there's literally a button like right below us. And you can just, it's all the same perks. Actually a couple more because Patreon doesn't have integration with YouTube, so you get a little badge in the comments and when you're doing, or you're joining us for a premiere. And also... That's the only difference. Well, we'll have, we're gonna add uh, little emojis that you can use that are exclusive to members, but, you know. It's just an emoji. Cares? It's but, just an emoji. You know. That could be, make or break it for you. I don't know. Maybe. But you're gonna get the same exclusive content. You're gonna get the same early access, ad-free access, and things of that nature. It's just over here native on YouTube. So, so really it's just your preference. If you're not familiar yep. with Patreon and you'd rather just do it through YouTube, good news, we have made that option fully available to you. So check it out if that is something that interests you, which we will be adding some new content here soon. We finally have the time to go down and get some work done. <laughs> the video that we've been talking about filming for a couple weeks now. Taking so. you into the heart of Mormon land in Salt Lake City. Into the belly of the beast. Okay, turns out that was the only thing that I had. <laughs> I thought that was a lot more. But anyway, let's get into today's topic. And this one was suggested by Jordan, but primarily researched by me. It's true. But that's because Jordan is constantly busy. And as soon as the toddler goes to bed, I'm, I'm home free, so what's today's topic about, Jordan? I misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about the Duggars. Yay. And this one is going to have a bit of a twist. Um, we're going to be looking at some of, uh, initially, some of the similarities between things that the Duggars do and other similar independent Baptists or IFB um, believing people and what Mormons do. And toward the end, we're going to focus more on Josh Duggar and other things that we've been seeing in the media as it regards to Mormon leaders and other goings ons in Mormons committing heinous crimes. So if there's anything triggersome about CSA, SA, or CSAM, if you know what those are, then this is probably not for you. If you don't know what those are, go ahead and pause this, Google them really quick, and then come back and you can decide for yourself if this is going to be a healthy topic for you to listen to. But I will stop once we get to that point and say, hey, this is your time to turn back or, or whatever, because the first little bit is not going to be as heavy as the the last bit will be. So the Duggar family, if you have never heard of the Duggar families, you might not be American, I guess. We have an international audience and the Duggar family is best known for their um, stint on a series on TLC called initially 17 Kids and Counting, 
then after 18 kids and counting, and ending on 19 kids and counting. Why would that be, Jordan? Why did they name their show after that? Because what else do they do? (laughs) These people got a lot of kids, and it's no secret. So the Duggar family are a... They're a family of devout independent Baptists, otherwise known as IFB, um, which I learned today, technically they don't have any like central centralized belief other than the belief of the believer's baptism, and they do that by immersion, which is kind of shared by the Mormons in a sense, because bapt- uh, Mormons baptize by immersion, and it is a symbol that, or something that you have to do in order to be saved to Something enter the that celestial everyone kingdom. has in common yeah exactly so the duggars have kind of their own except they probably do it really young though don't they like the kids i didn't see that maybe I'm, it I'm not really familiar i never watched 19 kids and counting so this is not by any means going to be like an exhaustive lesson on the duggars if you'd like to check more about the duggars i'm gonna link funny friday's videos up in here Jen's or maybe done I, some D. she's done a couple videos on them so i'll link I'll, a playlist of those ones and you can check that out because she's awesome we love her we're awesome friends and we want all of you to be awesome friends with them so the purpose of this video will be more of an analysis and comparison with contrasting the duggars <laughs> with Mormonism and the perspective of two ex-Mormons now looking at this with fresher eyes. Fresher, more objective eyes. Yes. Maybe scrutinizing would be the the term that a lot of people would say that way you're using, but. Yes. So anyway, the Duggar family and the Mormons. I have on here, they practice a conservative, a very conservative form of purity culture. This includes uh, they do not kiss during courtship. I don't even think they hold hands or are supposed to do anything like that. Please collect, correct me if I'm wrong, but above all, they're not allowed to ever be alone with a significant other or anybody of the opposite sex, including people in their own family. Or am I mi- mixing people up? Oh, wait. Siblings of the opposite sex are not allowed to be alone together. Oh, okay. Well, then I was go. right. You were right. <laughs> I I hadn't put it in the notes, but I was almost positive that I had seen it elsewhere. So, I mean, they had the right idea, but it didn't prevent (laughs) anything. We'll talk about that (laughs) more at length later. But how does that compare to the Mormon practice of purity culture? I think it's probably pretty similar given that you know, not being alone with the opposite sex, doing group dating. It's not really like regarded as courting in Mormonism. Like it's definitely more casual, but the expectation is that you're going on group dates and you're not becoming like too involved with each other. And then obviously we have like any law of chastity violation is anything more than kissing is considered a serious sin. And some people even would classify kissing as a serious sin. Yeah, but, there are some. Um, just like the IFB situation, those are not doctrines. They're more personally held beliefs. Mm-hmm. Whereas things like total abstinence before marriage and total fidelity after you're married to somebody of the opposite sex is a doctrine. It is held by all Mormons as fact, and you don't change things of that nature. Yeah. So... No dating during courtship or date or, or sorry, no kissing during courtship or dating and Doesn't sound not like they being have a alone. dating age unless they do and we just don't know. Maybe. I think they... We probably do. They probably do. But for the Mormons, it's 16 years old is the standard set forth by the pamphlet for the strength of youth. And yeah, you're not supposed to really do anything too hot and heavy before you're even like dating steady and everything like that. Do kids disobey that? Of course, all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. So anyway, next thing I have on here was more geared toward dress standards, which I did find a little bit interesting uh, in a clip that Jen had included in one of her videos. 
Uh, no shorts or tank tops allowed for anybody. Girls have to wear skirts longer than knee length and keep hair long. Boys keep clean shaven. No swimming in public areas to avoid impure thoughts about other people that might be dressed immodestly while they're swimming. And I did see a clip of the, the, the clip I was referring to was them running like a 5k and all the boys were wearing pants running a 5k in pants yeah and jim bob duggar he's the uh the dad of them he was like so proud that they were all wearing pants and you could see our boys from a mile away and it's just some a weird thing to be proud of honestly the chafing the chafing the sweat dude if i ran a 5k in pants and these kids i mean in this clip they were wearing like cargo pants thick if I ran Material. down the street in pants, I my would legs just would like break out, keel over, and lay in the street. Yeah, that might be a little bit dramatic, but I ain't running a five k <laughs> in jeans, bro. Seriously, so the no shorts thing is kind of, and the fact that it it goes both ways was pretty interesting. That you're not allowed to wear shorts or tank tops. The because in the Mormon context, that's fair. I I mean I didn't wear tank tops, and my parents kind of discouraged it because they were like when you are able to wear garments you won't be able to wear tank tops anymore so more than underwear reason, garments incompatible yes unless you want to have a really weird looking outfit and that that's also i mean it's discouraged anyway so if you were wearing a garment top underneath a tank top that's scandalous you well that's you showing look like your an covenant for one <laughs> but the vibes that this is giving me girls have to wear skirts longer than knee length and keep hair long you know what that's giving me anti-sjw no <laughs> it's giving me warren jeff's flds vibe especially with the long hair yeah they do it up in a certain way mm -hmm. i recently was at the grocery store and there were a couple of girls that are from that group of flds they stand out there. like sore thumbs i know things. i feel bad yeah, that it wasn't even the first time i had encountered them here in utah i remember when i was working at uh, a tire shop and they rolled in with their big truck that was connected to a big old uh, cattle trailer and like one guy and may i probably what was his son hopped out and like five or six girls crammed in the back of the cab of that big truck i was like oh my god anyway getting away from the uh, the subject at hand they're uh i wonder if they really have to wear dress clothes code. in the pool i'm pretty sure jill's done that to her kids i was trying to i thought of that too because <laughs> i remember seeing a different clip thank you jen for all these clips that are just living rent free in my head i've seen that um, somewhere yeah, Is that where, where they were like swimming in the canal no or something. oh maybe yeah that's what i remember seeing which that's just f***ing gross but i swear yeah. i thought there was one where they were at a pool and they were wearing clothes that it's might be likely. from fundy snark i don't know it, it could be anywho but they're not allowed to swim in anywhere that's public anyway so which it, nobody would look at that and think it's odd because nobody's there except for the people who are on the show we know many a Mormon who got sent home from swimming pools by male church leaders for not being modest enough in their swimwear. So this yeah. kind of tracks. This usually would happen at like an activity of some sort where they have, it's called mutual. The young men and the young women get together and co-mingle because those are the people you're going to marry, right? So you got to make sure that you have social skills. Social skills. Across the aisle, so to speak. Uh, the next thing that is really weird, and I will defer to Jordan to talking about this because she is a therapist intern, uh, they have the buddy system. The buddy system, as I am given to understand, is when a child is old enough, they are to they are assigned a buddy who is basically an infant. Once they can are uh, in a space where that infant can be taken care of by an older kid they are assigned that and once that child grows up and is old enough to have their own buddy then the cycle continues so because what's the reality of this situation if you have 19 children you cannot be a parent to 19 children in a healthy emotionally involved way 
my personal opinion. Um, and the buddy system is basically our requirement because nothing would get done otherwise. And there's no possible way for Michelle to have her eyes in 19 different places at once and to be emotionally attached and providing for each one of these kids in a healthy way. I'm not saying there's no emotional attachment. But yeah. imagine divvying up your time between 19 kids. Like, it's just going to come out uneven any way you dice it. Like, it's just yeah, it's just not going to work. Not to mention we have, you know, parentification when children who are supposed to be children are taking on the responsibilities of parents and instead being a parent to their siblings, which is extremely unhealthy and causes a lot of problems and... I mean, these are tasks like you have to get them up and get them ready for the day, get them dressed, get them fed and things of all that. I, this is not like, oh, you just have to be around them all the time and make sure that they don't like fall into the crank, creek and drown or something like that. It's extensive and it basically takes away some of the core responsibilities that a parent has to their infant child or small toddler or whatever and passes the buck off to another child. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, I'm sure it is not a, like a, uh, I mean, in the bigger families that we've talked about on like Mormon family vloggers and things like that, I can imagine stuff like this happens. Because when you have such an extraordinary, an, an extraordinarily large household of kids, you can't have your eyes on all of them at all the time. I think with Mormonism, it's probably just implied. Kind of, honestly. Because, like, kind of the nature of the show with the Duggars is that, you know, it's like reality TV, but it was also, like, documentary style. And so they had to explain kind of in depth all the things that they did. And so the perfect way to explain that system is to make it sound like it's not passing off your responsibilities as a parent to your older children is to be like, it's yeah. a buddy system. It's giving your child a buddy, somebody, a friend. And it's giving your child another parent because you can't be. Yeah. Because, I mean, in, in the Mormon sense, there are there are pretty extraordinarily large families out there. Mm -hmm. um, in Colorado, which is a state where people don't ha tend to have very... They, they don't have very many kids on average. Like, the most... The biggest family that I knew, they had seven kids, which was outrageous uh, to think of at the time. And on top of that... You're also assigned um, jobs within the church. So there are, are people out there who have seven kids and even kids that are young, pre before school age, and they're getting called into bishoprics and they have responsibilities that take them away from, you know, spending time with their family on top of their job or whatever else they do. So when there's only one parent in the house, I mean, you cut down the usual number by half, mm -hmm. then things like this have to come in and uh, take hold. So the, the buddy system, I don't think is like really a new, unique thing. It's just mm -hmm. giving, like Jordan said, giving a name to something that just happens. Another thing I wanted to talk about was blanket training. And I don't really know if there is anything that I could compare this to in Mormonism because it is trigger warning for child abuse yeah it is something that i feel like would even repulse mormons but i wanted to bring it up because it should be made known that people who do this are not good people in my opinion and uh i think the american academy of psychiatry and pediatrics would agree with me on that one <laughs> uh, but Basically, Blanket Training was from the book To Train Up a Child by Michael and Debbie Pearl. If they're around, I hope they're having a terrible time. If they're not around, uh, good riddance. Jen has a video <laughs> on them as well. I, I don't know too much about them because my blood boils anytime the topic comes up. But Blanket Training is this idea where you have to instill the value of obedience exact obedience and quick obedience in your child before the opportunity for them to defy you ever arises, which in this case is when they're an infant. So the idea behind blanket training is you place your child on a blanket and then you place a toy or something that they want 
just out of reach or just off of the blanket. And then when they reach for it, you swat them with, I think the Duggars would deem it a rod or a stick and things of that nature. And you tell them no, constantly. We're talking infants, like can't even really crawl or anything like that. And you are abusing them, brutalizing them. So practices like this are really despicable. And it's a shame that things like this are still happening, especially because now there are people out there who will tell you that this is not okay. Professionals, and, experts, psychologists, yeah. therapists, psychiatrists, there are doctors. so many people who... Pediatricians. Will spell it out for you that you should not do this kind of thing. And a lot of the answer sometimes would be to just avoid those people. Um, so something that people need to be aware, made aware of just so that this harmful practice stops. But, yep, that's what they do. I have never met anybody who would be like that. I mean, I've seen Mormon parents who would get irate with their kids and everything like that, but that was nothing unique to my experience as a child and just hanging out with my friends who were non-Mormon and everything like that. I think lots of Mormons fall under the, like, parents our age, you know, like, well, our parents' age, like Gen X and, you know, boomer on up, it was pretty widely accepted. I feel like just in the United States in general, that spanking is like a regular, um, normal thing to do. And so I think like older Mormons and like our generation, I feel like was spanked. Um, and so I think it's becoming less and less prevalent of a thing. I mean, I think it was the American Academy of Pediatrics put out a statement I want to say a while ago about how like we have the research that backs that spanking is not effective in any way, shape or form. Um, and so like the research is there and I can't even begin to tell you how harmful it is to do that to a child. And so regardless of whether you think it's inconsequential and don't even come at me in the comments when I was spanked and I was fine. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Um, yeah. but that's well, not it, unique to Mormons. I, I just, like. I just love to think about the, the idea that you're so fucking fragile that your kid might call you out on your bullshit or say something that's against what you think or what you want, that you will preemptively abuse them in order to prevent that from happening. Like, wow, cannot believe that anybody, I can't believe that the pearls would admit that they're that much of fucking losers that they can't handle a child. Well, and then we have all these older parents right now, like Gen X and boomers that are like, my adult children don't talk to me. <laughs> and then they wonder I why. Wonder why. <laughs> like, God, put two and two Jeez, together. Stay with me. Take your two brain cells that you have remaining and put them together yes. to make this happen. We're painting with a very broad brush. We understand that there we have Not all boomer boomers and Gen X are bad. We have boomer we viewers, and if you're a boomer and you're here, then you're cool. You are not those people. Anyhow, the quiverful movement is something that the Duggars heavily subscribe to. This idea is derived from a scripture. They're it is, deep in the quiverful. They movement. are deep, dude. Nineteen kids. That is <laughs> quiverful to the max. There's no more expansions of your arrow capacity, my guy. Uh, Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5, and it reads, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So that's what? where the idea of quiver full comes from. That's a lot of dumb language this is the king james version i'm sure there is another version out there that maybe states that in language that is a little more intelligible but the gist of it is that uh oh children are like arrows and blessed is the man who has his quiver full of arrows so the idea behind the quiver full mu movement is that you don't use any sort of natural fan family planning any sort of birth control any sort of well, some would call it natural family planning, but yeah. that might be too much even for the Duggars, like tracking your cycle and knowing when you yeah. ovulate and those things. That would be considered natural family planning. So, I mean, there's probably some people who maybe do that and kind of plan it around that. 
But the idea is that you just let it rip, tater chip, and whatever happens, happens. And you want to have as many kids as you can because that's how many blessings you're supposed to get. The story behind this, because originally they did not set out when they were like first married and they had their first kid, Josh, who we'll talk about more at length in a minute here. Um, they used birth control before him, and then once they had him, uh, Michelle, the mom, got back on birth control, and despite taking birth control, they conceived a child that miscarried, which is a tragic thing, obviously. But after she had the miscarriage, then it seems like they they dropped off of the birth control and went headfirst into the Quiverful movement. I always love when <laughs> we're researching people and I find out that they're just raw dogging it constantly. <laughs> That's my favorite part about researching. <laughs> uh. Anyway, all of this, uh, really when it comes to Mormonism, that's also one of those things that it's really ambiguous and it's kind of mm -hmm. surprising because there is a lot of rhetoric in the Mormon church surrounding having large families and that, that children are being a blessing. I remember when I was, um, when we were kind of first married and maybe a little bit before that, there was a, an, a Mormon apostle that was basically telling young single adults that they shouldn't be waiting to get for like a certain milestone to get married. Is it a bad idea to get married before you have a good amount of savings in the bank? So many questions come in in this regard and more and more. I think in our, in our 21st century, there's been more of an inclination to think, I, I've, got to, I've got to go on a mission and we want you to do that. But then I've got to get in school and then I've got to get out of school and, and then I've got to uh, ideally get a job. And then if I have a job, I, I'll get some money. And, and lo and behold, you know, maybe you're 35 or 40 uh, before, before this. Look, I, I'll add to Sister Corden. If Sister Holland and I had waited till we had money, we still wouldn't be married. <laughs> till we had money, till we had money, till we had money, we still wouldn't be married. <laughs> they shouldn't be waiting until they're graduated to get married. They shouldn't be waiting until they have a stable job to have kids because those are things that provide blessings and you'll be rewarded for those things if you trust in God and just jump head first with <laughs> nothing into them. Um, so basically so, decide to have, like, I don't know, one of the biggest decisions you might make easily. in your life. About, the biggest financial decision, at the very least. You know, just just do it yeah like i don't care if you're living in your parents basement just do it i don't care if you have 300 dollars in the bank just do it yeah like i did it I'm like well elder holland you're like a rich fucking apostle so like shut the hell up yeah they are really big on that and there has been for a really long time like this unofficial narrative that it is between you and the Lord, but there are a certain amount of souls that have been kind of like allocated to your family eternally and that you will have promptings or receive some sort of revelation about if you need to have another one. And this really influences people a lot of times to have another kid, even if they are like stretched to their absolute fucking limit. They have nothing extra in the bank account and they have a, a home that will end up being too small with an extra kid. So there's a lot of implicit coercion that happens within the Mormon church for people to have kids because the overall thing, this is a good thing for the Mormons because convert baptisms do not retain by and large. The only retention that they really get is through people who are indoctrinated from a really young age that grow up to become full tithe payers to sustain the church. So they push really hard and they, they don't push back on those harmful ideas because it serves them in the long run. So they never denounce any of those teachings or murmurings of ideas. They just let them happen and they, even they make reap movies the rewards about them. for it. Yeah. We watched on our Patreon the 1981, no, 1989 classic Saturday's Warrior that 
is based on that premise. Based on that idea, yeah. So if you'd like to check that out, we have the VOD for it on our Patreon. We were supposed to have a VOD when we watched a new, the newer version of it, but I fucked up. <laughs> it was a disaster that day. And it day, was a disaster. So. I'll work on getting all the, the back content put onto YouTube so that everybody can, wa- all the members can watch it. Um, but yeah, check out patreon.com slash Jordan McKay and soon to be uh, the become a member button down below. Heck yeah. The Duggars, um, like I said, they kind of came to prominence because they first um, appeared in a mini, mini documentary like a one-off special called 14 Kids and Pregnant Again, which originally aired in 2004. And there were, I think, five subsequent um, specials that gave way to their 10-season series, 17 Kids and Counting, and then later 18 and 19 Kids and Counting. So, I mean, these people, they were big. If you live in the United States and you... I remember hearing about the show. Mm -hmm. I never really remember hearing the name but i remember hearing about the show i didn't really watch tlc i thought all the shows were kind of dumb and i was too busy watching sister wives so there you go that's on tlc isn't it Mm -hmm. okay there you go but uh yeah it was a really popular show i mean it went 10 seasons and then even after that they had um that even gave way to a their own spin-off show of some of the kids called Counting On, but we didn't really need to. Uh, that started in 2015, it sounds like. The original show premiered in 2000, 2008, initially. And since they came to such popularity, it also came as a huge shock to see the fall from grace of Josh Duggar, which is a name that you probably could have heard in the national news recently because of the misconduct conducts that he's had. So this is your cutoff point. We're going to be talking about some triggering things. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be talking about Josh Duggar and the shit that he's done because he's terrible. So things for Josh Duggar started early on, and it actually predated the premiere of any of their appearances on television. But most of the information really didn't come out like to light until about 2015 when there was this article written about him and there were um, Freedom of Information Act requests and things like that. But we'll get to that in a minute. The issue primarily stemmed from... A, 2000 sk- a 2006 scheduled appearance on Oprah. Oprah? Oprah. Appa- apparently they were supposed to go on Oprah and have an interview all at that time, I think 16 of them. But they were sent an anonymous email from some unknown source that gave them information that Joss had molested various victims on various occasions when he was 14 to 15 years old. And the interview was promptly canceled and the producers uh, alerted the Department of Human Services. There was a subsequent investigation that uncovered that the incidents had occurred between 2002 and 2003, hence when he was 14 and 15 years old. And that the there weren't any repeated offenses following 2003. And because of this, the Arkansas, um, which is where the state that they live in, the state of Arkansas requires that charges be filed within three years of perpetration. Um, and since it was already 2006, they weren't able to uh, file any charges against Josh. So that's awesome. Love that. That's Love why it's, statutes of limitations. Yeah. It's really cool that they do that. There are other places um, that are like slowly getting rid of statutes of limitations for things like CSA, like Colorado is one of them. Let's fucking go Colorado. So let's yeah. hope that becomes more of a thing. Yeah. Seems like these are almost to protect people in power's friends or something like that. But that's just conjecture on my part. Anyway, in this 2015 article that I had mentioned earlier, a Freedom of Information Act request revealed that Jim Bob was made aware of... Such a dumb name. Yeah, Jim Bob. Just go by one of them. Jim Bob. Like his... It's not even hyphenated, right? Jim Bob. I don't know. (laughs) 
I'm wearing shorts and my thighs are sticking to the chair. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a very serious situation, Jordan. I'm sorry. It's are really we, uncomfortable. Are your thighs signaling the go ahead to continue? Am I getting the green light? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All my okay. friends understand. In Sound this, off in the comments. <laughs> I thought I had the green light. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in this Freedom of Information Act request, Jim Bob was uh, revealed that he was made aware of some of these incidences of CS instances incidences of CSA um, in, regarding some of the other Duggar children, and he uh, he said that he was made aware of that in March 2002, and he was allegedly disciplined at home. There was no like, from what I could see just off of some surface level learning there was no specification of what that means so um i'm gonna go ahead and guess that nothing happened <laughs> just based off of some of the other information that i've got here one year later jim bob and michelle learned of other incidents one of which included a babysitter so suddenly a member outside of the family a person outside of the family was include, involved, and now is the time to take action, apparently. Um, so this revelation in uh, spurred action or inaction, if you ask me, I would call it the latter, uh, from the parents to inform the local church elders and seek guidance on their course of action. Who does that sound like? Oh, sounds like the Mormon church with their bishops. But the Duggars are not as sophisticated in this process. The Mormon church spends millions, has their own law firm run by people who work for the church and have a temple recommend. And if you don't have a temple recommend, then you lose your job. They yep. have their own law firm. And if kids are being abused, the church leader just goes, hotline, guess what guys? Hey, should I report this to the police? And the lawyers on the other end of the phone We'll probably tell you no. And we'll talk about some of those instances later. Clergy we're doing this a lot. Privilege. Like foreshadowing. So you have to stick around and see what we're going to talk about. So they talk with the elders of the church. And uh, number one, that is the wrong choice. I don't give a shit who you are. You talk to the authorities. I, I have my reservations about things. But when it comes to children... There need to be repercussions for the law because people like Josh, who is doing that to his siblings, should not be in a situation where that can happen anymore. He has daughters. Yeah. Um, we haven't gotten that far yet, so we're going to... Just but, a nice little horrifying reminder. Yeah. Um, in the original poor... Uh, blah, blah, blah. In the original report, it was said that Josh was sent to work and help remodel a building for a family friend for three months. Um, in other subsequent reports, which can't really be confirmed just because of the nature, it was said that he was sent to uh, a facility owned by the Institute in Building Life Principles, IBLP, founded uh, the, the founder and family friend of the Duggars, Bill Gothard, who I like to call Bill Got Hard, considering um, allegations surrounding him. Uh, <laughs> but it's unclear whether the facility was operating in a way that he would be able to go there or if it was being even like even being renovated at that time. So sounds like it's hard to say whether that facet was involved or not. This is like steps behind Ruby, eight passengers, Mormon mommy blogger Ruby sending her son to a basically wilderness torture camp where he slept on the ground for yeah. days at a time. Troubled teen industry in Utah gives a lot of Send them out for some vibes. hard work and some Break good their old spirits. Jesus, uh, come to Jesus talks around the campfire or something like that. Abuse. That'll that'll straighten him out, this guy who's um, CSAing children. I guess the C kind of implies that it's children. Anyway. Uh, following his return, he was taken to meet his return from the three months. He was taken to meet a family acquaintance, Joseph Hutchins, who was an Ar Arkansas state trooper. 
The Duggar family holds true that they reported all of these instances. They relate it to this state trooper. Um, however, Hutchins, uh, through his lawyer, states that he was only made aware of one instance of this incestuous CSA. Um, and he did not deem that worthy of reporting. Despite Hold up. Allegedly. What? Allegedly. He didn't deem that worthy of reporting? No. I don't know how Arkansas works, but generally police officers are mandatory reporters. reporters. Which I was going to say right there. So Jordan so, beat me to the punch on that one. I he just is a read mandated that reporter, and, like, and he is still in the wrong for not reporting that for it to be investigated. So good job. It does kind of make a little bit of sense that he didn't report that because he is currently serving... 56 year sentence for unrelated charges of possession of CSAM. So, I mean. Also, it's not your job as a police officer or somebody who's a mandated reporter to decide what is or isn't worth reporting. Like, as somebody who's formerly a teacher, currently a therapist intern, like, you just report like that's yeah. that's your job it's not your job to be like hmm is this bad enough that i should report it or not like when in doubt just report okay yeah we're talking about children here that's something i mean i already have my own reservations regarding law enforcement and things like that but that is something that you needs to be investigated no matter how small the allegation when it regards children i mean being being a father myself now, I take it so much more seriously. And the fact that other fathers or parents in general do not just, uh, it just makes me so sick. Honestly. And this is not like a, the unfortunate part about this is no matter what religion you're a part of or, you know, just religions in general, like we're aware that Catholics have a problem with yeah. this. Mormons have a problem with this. Like, it seems to be like a cross, big, main denomination type, you know, Christianity is pretty broad, but it it's an issue and it's not something that we can like one off to say this is like a Duggar thing. Like, I'm a victim of CSA and I also had a parent who didn't report it and it was by a family member. So it's like these things happen like continually and yeah. I have a whole interview I talked about it in my Mormon stories interview and what happened and why I was encouraged by leadership to not report. Yeah. Um, but that's like the thing is there's like a power dynamic here that's being manipulated. And then there's friends in high places that's being manipulated. So the church manipul like the Mormon church manipulates it through lawyers and their hotline. And in this instance, like they went to the police and reported it. Yeah. But that person was, a friend an acquaintance yeah or somebody they knew who wasn't going to report it like yeah. it's manipulation if they were, it was almost maybe to fulfill with some sort of moral duty or something like that like oh we told a cop and he did nothing we did Come our on. part yeah and I, I it likely is more a symptom of power dynamics and things like that more than it is i'm not i mean i am a pretty staunch atheist but i'm not going to pin that on it being a religion thing as it is a power dynamics thing which churches set up in a lot of cases um but the thing that i really was thinking about while i was like reading this and seeing how it played out was like this stuff happens in the mormon church and we've been seeing it a lot lately and the mormons are out here going well the church is true but the people are not. The people are imperfect. Mm -hmm. The church is perfect, but the people aren't. And they can say, well, the thing that I am participating in is still a net positive because it does all these things because it's the true church. And because of the presupposition that it's the true church, the one and only true church, every other church out there, when things like this happen, they can go, well, it's just a fruit of a false religion. Like, they're playing both sides of of the, the bullshit, which is just so infuriating that 
I mean, when I was a missionary, we would joke all the time about all of the CSA that would go on in the Catholic Church. Like it wasn't fucking happening in the same church. It just happened at a larger scale because there are so many more Catholics than there are Mormons. So. Mormons might be better at covering it up. Exactly. They have, I mean. They pay lawyers to handle lawyers these things. That so. are out of this world. And despite being not even a tenth the size of the Catholic Church, they definitely do rival them when it comes to monetary power. So. Church has billions, remember. Just sitting in a fund. Billions. With that, a B. With a B. And not just a few. Hundreds. Hundreds of billions. So following that little saga of bullshit that this piece of garbage did when he was a teenager, um, it was not just a one-off thing. He had other situations that he found himself in. In 2015 alone, um, there was a breach at ashleymadison.com. If you are unaware of what that is, uh, you can go ahead and Google it. But essentially, if you want to have an affair, you go to ashleymadison.com. And I'm not commenting on like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this or whatever, because I mean, it could be something that you and your partner are okay with or whatever. But uh, Josh definitely is not. But there was a breach of records in uh, on AshleyMadison.com. And guess who was <laughs> a user, an active user at AshleyMadison.com? Ya boy, uh, Pest Duggar. So that was funny. And also in the same year, um, there was a- accusations of SA by adult actress Danica Dillon citing emotional and physical injuries during a lap dance or what I found on Wikipedia was an episode of consensual sex, but I don't think a, a person episode? on the planet Earth would say something like that. I'm having an episode. But but she had said that he had paid like over $600 in, or she had performed at least $600 in lap dance services or something to that tune. That's an expensive lap dance. I know. I'm like, is... She That's a whole hell does she know what she's worth, or was that just an, a testament to the duration of this? There's no way that's just for a lap dance. No way. Anyway, but that happened in 2015. She accused she was uh, seeking like five hundred thousand dollars in damages, but later dropped the suit. I don't know if that was because she wasn't going to win, or if it was a frivolous lawsuit. By the way, who's to say? Just to be clear, we support sex work and sex yeah. workers. Like, no, let's if just she make that clear. if she had any sort of distress and felt that she needed to collect damages for that, I 100% support that. And if she dropped the suit just because they her lawyer felt like they weren't being able to go anywhere with it, I think that's really tragic. Or if it was too traumatic, like yeah, there's a million that, reasons that why. Too. I mean, these are just some of the listed L's that this guy takes um, in the meanwhile, in between committing crimes, because even though he wasn't convicted of the first ones, they were crimes, but he just couldn't stop. He was on a road and it was all gas, no brakes for this motherfucker. In 2021, just this last year, he was arrested on April 29th of 2021 for receiving and being in possession of CSAM, uh, which he was said to be acquiring from his place of business. So Homeland Security came and raided Duggar's used car dealership wholesale motor callers. He's a used car salesman. That makes a lot of sense. Sorry, used car salesman, but you guys kind of have a a reputation. (laughs) Um, So yeah, they came and they raided his thing like that. Uh, his business and all this it it was a big hubbub if you were here in the united states then you probably heard about it i remember hearing about it and i was like who's this josh duggar guy what the fuck um because of the nature of the charges the judge allowed bond but with the condition that he was not allowed to be in a residence or a place alone where minors were present under the age of 12 uh, which precluded his home because most of his children, most of his six children at the time, were under the age of 12. I think only one was 12 or older. I can't remember. Um, his wife was also pregnant with their seventh child, which was due in October of that year. Um, notably, and he was rele- released on bond, but he had to stay at a third party's house. Um, he had to... Did he, though? It's hard to say 
we're going to presume as per the information that we have that he complied with that. Um, and I think he had to have his wife present if the kids were there. Um, well, speaking he was from personal to. experience, that might not do anything. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, notably, the investigator from Homeland Security alleged that one of the things found in Duggar's possession was a video produced by Peter Scully. When I found this out, I could not fucking believe it because... I don't know, maybe like a year or two ago, a Reddit rabbit hole led me down to finding out who Peter Scully is. If you are still here and you have a weak stomach, absolutely do not look into Peter Scully. There is a particular thing that he produced, which I will abbreviate as DD. If you are morbidly curious, you'll find out what I'm talking about, but don't. I just don't. Could not go on reading about this shit after I found that out because. I knew, as soon as I saw that name, I knew exactly what they were referring to, and I could not believe it. Peter Scully is serving life in the Philippines, I think, and his sister complained about the conditions in the prison there, and I hope that they're the absolute fucking worst, because this is a person that is absolute, like, pure evil, and the fact that Josh Duggar was in possession of, like, the guy's magnum opus is just absolutely beyond fucking. Um, but all of that considered, Duggar was sentenced to 12 years, 12 measly years and seven months in prison, which won't be over until 2020, uh, 2032. Um, after that, he will have 20 years of supervised release where he will not be able to have unsupervised contact with any child, any minor, including his own children. He's also forbidden from using the internet in that um, time period, unsupervised. Uh, or without permission of his parole officer. And then he will still be monitored all activity on um, the internet. Uh, So like filters and shit like that. Um, On top of this, he's got a $10,000 fine, along with $40,000 in other assessments uh, that he is required to pay by the court. Not enough. Not enough, honestly. Years or money. Like, I cannot stress this enough. If what this investigator said was true, this guy, oh, it gets me worked up that this guy only got 12 years for possession of something like that. Absolutely despicable. Um, anyway, that's all I have about Josh Duggar and everything, but we wanted to kind of relate that to um, some of the goings-ons in Mormon world lately that have been happening. A lot of you have seen an AP article that has come out. We actually talked about it a little bit on our live stream a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. when it first came out um, about a situation that was similar to this in a really gross fashion. Um, A man, I don't even want to say his name because he's a piece of shit, and um, I don't really care that he's not around anymore because he's committing crimes of the absolute most heinous degree um, where he was abusing two of his children in their own home, sometimes in the fucking family room. And he reported this to his bishop. And after he reported it to the bishop, it continued for seven years, seven years. He was going into his bishop continually and the bishop would check in on what's going on He would admit that it was happening still. The bishop would bring the guy's wife in and be like, why are you allowing this to happen? Instead of addressing the fucking problem, who is the man in this relationship. And seven years, it took seven years for that to happen. And it wasn't the bishop going to the police. It wasn't anybody else going to the police. It was the discovery of a a a video that that man had made with his six month, no, six week old daughter that surfaced in New Zealand that was given to the Department of Homeland Security and traced back to this guy. That finally did him in seven long years of abuse that ended because some other sick person halfway across the world fucked up. Just absolutely insane that things like this happen. And this is also, the bishop said that 
the wife of this person was emotionally dead and he was very aware that she wasn't going to stop him. So again, tell me what that was going to do, like by placing the burden on her and telling her that it's her problem. I'm not saying that what she did is okay because it's fucking not. Yeah. But to be like, you're not the one with the problem. Why doesn't your wife get yeah. your gross ass in check? Your wife isn't meant to fix your abs. This is a, you're broken, honestly, if this is the kind of thing that you are okay with doing, that you take pleasure in doing. So there was that. Um, the point uh, really that I wanted to hit on that was similar with the, the Duggar situation back in the early 2000s was this man went to his ecclesiastical leader who failed to report heinous crimes against children. In this case, it was even worse because he called this law firm in Salt Lake City and they multiple times told him that he was not required to report it and they just referred him to services, which are also run by the church, that essentially were to no avail. And similarly, the Duggar parents went to their elders at their local church. And I mean, I don't even know if they were the ones who suggested him going away for three fucking months, but there was no legal action that was taken because there was no reporting that was going on, except for the instance where they spoke with a um, also sexual deviant um, law enforcement officer that they were acquaintances with. So it's also notable which I wasn't aware of this, but the Mormon hotline that directs to their Curtin and McConkie law firm wasn't developed until 1995. And prior to 1995, they apparently just told everyone to comply with the law. So I'm not sure what disconnect was made in 1995, but apparently we lost all ability to protect children yeah. in 1995. So not sure where that happened or why. And the, there's been a lot of conversations surrounding this AP article of Mormons trying to discredit this uh, author, who is the same author that was bringing to light the uh, the CSA that was going on in the Catholic Church. So yeah. if they want to discredit this, they should also discredit that by saying that they are just um, there to advise in legal ramifications that would could befall him and the church if he were to report and it not being necessary or anything. I don't know what the fuck apologetics it is. By all counts, it doesn't matter. When it, when children are on the line, I mean, these people are just always going in so hard that children are the most precious. They are, I mean, suffer the children that they come to me, right? What Jesus said. And they're trying every turn at any every turn to brush this off as they were just doing what was right by the law like what the fuck you have no leg, leg to stand on when it comes to children being harmed and morality children being harmed is always going to take over the law like you should always do what is right by the children especially when you have concrete evidence like, this guy isn't even the guy who's doing the investigation, nor should he be. He's the bishop. He should report it to the people who will investigate it, who have that skill set. Because bishops don't have any fucking training in that regard. Child protective services, social workers. Yeah, no training. And recently, I mean, a lot of them can at least admit that they're, they're not equipped. We recently were talking to a family member who was a bishop, and he was like, I honestly, in a lot of cases, was not prepared to handle people's issues and that admission means means the world but a lot of people who are in this position they they full-on believe that they're called of god to solve these people's problems because it's their flock they're in charge of their ward and they're they have the power of god and the authority to with help no these training out. with no training there's lots of people lots of couples especially in mormonism who go to their bishop for marital problems that have really this is not necessarily anything to do with the church but they go to them first yeah. for counseling before like i'm a therapist intern and i see couples and i've had many a couple who go to like their bishop first and then fortunately some of these bishops know their limitations and their scope as not a professional and refer out to actual therapists. So 
that is what they should be doing because yeah. that is out of your scope as just a regular human bishop person who's not a trained professional. Yeah. And even then when they're referring out to these outside services, it's not really outside. A lot of them are internal. They'll refer them to LDS Family Services for counseling and therapy and things like that, which all of those people are Mormons. They're paid by the church. They have to have uh, meet a certain set of requirements, worthiness, I would assume, in order to work in that position. So starting to add up, ain't it? Not exactly the most uh, unbiased people to be sending people with troubles to. But anyway, so that was a really big thing. I mean, even just this month, there was another report uh, about a former West Bountiful mayor, church uh, and church leader who was a former bishop who was suspect in years-long CSA abuse. After this came to light, I, there were other victims that had stepped forward and said that this guy was... This man is 77 years old. Yeah. And this he has not been a bishop for a long time, so this was a long time ago. But this was pretty fucked. I mean, we... West Bountiful was neighbor to the city that we used to live in. Mm -hmm. Like, serious. Jordan had to drive through West Bountiful every single day to get to work. So this is, it's weird to think about A lot of things. general authorities live in Bountiful. Yeah. They could probably see this guy's house from their window. Um, Not only that, I just saw a report today from the ex-Mormon subreddit of a bishop who was arrested in Virginia for CSA. And the stake president emailed out a thing letting everyone know, but he didn't disclose who it was. So a either a progressive Mormon or ex-Mormon, it was somebody in the sub, so I don't know, emailed him back and said, you need to release the identity of this person so that the people who had kids who visited with him when he was bishop can like screen for potential issues that may have happened with their kids while he was bishop. And I, under, I understand that this comes off as these are anecdo anecdotes. They're really They're not. antidotes. But they happen all the time, constantly. When you're looking through these things, I mean, recently there was a guy in Idaho that had been... It's an epidemic within the Mormon church. And it, it happens everywhere. most often in these situations where there's a power dynamic and a male leader that ends up with children. It happened in our ward growing up. Yeah, with another youth. Mm -hmm. And... We don't think anything was done about that either. I don't think so, because recently I saw the, uh, him post a, music, a video of him singing in a Mormon church building. I mean, this was brought to the police and everything. Mind because you, everybody was minors that you can't get information about it, but... Mind you, this abuse that was happening took place in the church building. In the church building. So... So this is everywhere. It's everywhere within Mormonism and Mormons just look the other way and nobody acknowledges it and no one talks about it. And it's just this hush, hush, put it under the rug. But the trash heaping pile under the rug is starting to get fucking massive. Yep. So there's no more room in the closet no, for skeletons. No, for I will. I will note that the guy that we were talking about from that Associated Press article, he died by suicide prior to his trial. Um, and his wife did serve two years in prison. Um, but that's. These are the kind of people I, I'm, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't believe in heaven nor do I believe in hell as I used to in Mormonism, but it's the kind of, these are the kind of people that make me wish that I did. In this case, this guy got away with that and will not ever see any sort of consequence for it in my frame of thinking. It it just really sucks, honestly. So, um, yeah. Pest Duggar didn't get as much time as he should have, in my opinion. And uh, maybe if the Arkansas statute of limitations wasn't three years, something could have been done to stop that train that was barreling down the fucking tracks. But unfortunately, the the chips are down now, and what happened happened. So, we don't want to be like alarmist or anything like that. But it's important that everybody knows who's around their kids because you absolutely don't know. Most in these cases of the bishops and leaders and things like that, these are people who you trust, who are put in positions of power 
by a divine authority. Like people, like the leadership of the church, they go and they select who they think it should be. And then they take those names and they give it to the top fucking dogs, the first presidency. And those people receive revelation and they, from God, and they approve the selection of that bishop. So these people are staunch in their belief that God has vetted these people and they are people that they can trust with anything, even being alone with their kids. And I think it's just a harmful, harmful idea. And it's not just like, we have a problem here in Utah. Like here in Utah, we have a heavily concentrated number of Mormons in this state. And it is no coincidence, and I have articles to back this up, that Utah ranks first in CSA. Like nationally, among all the other states, Utah's number one for CSA. And we're still not putting two and two together here? Seriously. Well, not only that, teen suicide is also a huge issue, especially when it pertains to LGBTQ um, kids and things of that nature. And there's other other factors that go into that, but I'm sure that can also be a contributing factor. This was a, uh, a tougher episode, honestly. Do you have anything else? Um, I'll link the AP article in the description. As much as it's like horrifying and triggering, um, like the two girls who suffered this abuse, one of them from literally weeks after birth, um, deserved to have their story told. And they bravely did. Um, and that I think is something worth reading. And if, if it's triggering to you, I understand protect your mental health always. Right. But it needs to be shared and it needs to be read. And these are the reality of these things need to be faced. Um, because, you know, shame thrives in the dark. And when we don't talk about these things, that's what happens. Yeah. Like the church refuses to address it. They just say they comply with laws. And at the end of the day, that's what happens. But we have a problem here in Utah. Something is off in this state. And it is not a coincidence that it's mostly Mormons in this state. Like until we start to face these hard truths, nothing's going to change. Yeah. I mean, case in point with Josh Duggar. It, he was not stopped. There was absolutely minimal resistance to putting anything in his way to keep him from committing these heinous acts. And then people are shocked that he has to go to prison for absolutely like despicable possession of materials. It, it blows my mind. It should not come as a shock. And doing nothing and not talking about it and rooting out this kind of bullshit in our society is just going to allow people like that to thrive. We don't want that. So we don't want that for the Mormons. We want that to be, it will improve the Mormon church if that's not happening. We get this, we want something to improve the lives of Mormons and improve Mormonism as a whole. This just in. This just in, yeah. So suck on that one to the Mormon lurkers. We want some. You, we want something better for you, honestly. For your kids. For your kids. Because it is alarming. And these things, you don't think these things can happen? They're happening in your ward. They're happening yeah. to your neighbors. It's happening in your family. Like it, the statistics and the rates are just that fucking high. Like you know someone. You know someone, at least one yeah. person. And so this is more prevalent than you think. And the church is going to sit idly by and let it happen. So if somebody else isn't going to do it for you, you should be doing it. You should be the one standing up and standing in the way of those things. I will link the article, both of the ones that I've talked about. And I will also include some resources in the description for anybody who might be struggling with these types of things and not sure where to go. Um, I will include those links in the description. So thanks to anybody who had the stomach to stick around through that one, because honestly, yeah, going diving into this and really seeing, because I just from arm's length, 
kind of knew about the Duggars. And if I if we did watch the Fundy Fridays episodes about Josh, um, I don't think I was really paying full attention because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Um, and it was upsetting, to say the least. But um, it's stuff that, you know, we talk about on this channel, unfortunately. It's just the nature of the beast. So we don't want to leave things out just because they're gross or hard to hard talk, to talk about. about. But we appreciate everybody who does stick around and who supports the channel and supports what we are trying to do here because sometimes it is hard <laughs> to get up the strength to do this. So so anyway, I, I don't want to plug anything like that if you like what we're doing here, if you like our message, if you think our hair looks good, hit the subscribe button or download the podcast and get notifications for that. Um, we'd love to have you, but I won't plug anything because it just doesn't feel right to do that. Following this topic, uh, we love you all. You're amazing. And we will see you next time.